guys, it's your girl, Ashley Kirkwood with the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, where we teach you how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. During this show, you will hear solo episodes from me, where I'll show you how I have landed and negotiated five and six figure speaking contracts and licensing deals. You'll also hear from our amazing guests who have grown enormous speaking businesses by utilizing sales and marketing principles that work. If you want to grow your speaking business, listen to this podcast. And then afterwards, head on over to ashleynicolekirkwood.shop and grab my book, Speak Your Way to Cash, How to Start at the Top of the Speaking Market Instead of Working Your Way Up from the Bottom. Ready to dive in? Let's go. Hey, y'all. What's up to the Speak Your Way to Cash family? It's Ashley Kirkwood back again with another podcast episode. But this time, guys, I am actually going to let you listen in to a live video that I recorded. Now, if you're listening to this live video on the podcast and you're like, oh, I want to join your next live. I want to ask you questions. I want to be able to get feedback about my business. Then you have to follow me on Instagram at The Ashley Nicole Show and make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page. All right. Make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page because that's where I go live. I also sometimes go live in the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. But enough about that. Even though you may have missed it live, you're about to hear it again. So listen into this live episode and let me know what you think. You can always send me an email to Ashley at speakyourwaytocash.com. Let's listen in. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Ashley Kirkwood. I'm the host of the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. I am an award-winning lawyer, author, Amazon best-selling author of the book, Speak Your Way to Cash. And I own the company entitled Speak Your Way to Cash. We keep it really simple here. So if you want to find me real easy, just type in Speak Your Way to Cash on most platforms. And that is where, hello, hello, That is where I will be talking about how to grow your brand as a speaker and how to build your business on the backs of large corporate clients that you are overselling and over delivering to, as well as collegiate clients as well. Now, one of the questions that I get a lot is, hey, what does it look like to build a brand as a speaker? How will my clients know that I am who I say I am? How will they know that I'm as great as I say I am, right? How will they know, especially larger organizations? Well, likely they're going to Google you, all right? They're going to put you in Google and they're going to want to see what comes up. And I recommend that all of my clients, and this is something that I talk about in the Speak Your Way to Cash book, we literally have a whole section in the book on this topic of press. First, let me be really clear about what we're going to cover in this episode. So if you're watching Get your pens and papers out. If you got your notes ready, just drop notes in the chat. Let me know that you have your notes ready. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, here's what I'll say to my podcast fam. Make sure if you're driving and listening to this, you go back and listen to it at a time where you can take some notes. So first and foremost, why press matters. Press is something that helps you to solidify your your name in the marketplace. It helps you to have some foundation for the claims that you make on your website. And it bolsters what your clients say about you in testimonials. It really, it shows that you've gone the extra mile and gotten some external recognition, hopefully by a big platform. And the reason why people really take that to heart is because of something called journalistic integrity. So what people hope (laughs) and what what you want to happen is that you're in a publication where the journalists do some digging and fact check and verify where you're at. Now, we all know, because we in 2022, y'all, so we done been through the press roller coaster. We know that doesn't always happen, but the perception is still there that there is high journalistic integrity. And the, um, the more solidified the platform is that you get your business in, that you are featured in, the more uh, teeth the press will hold, right? So tonight we're gonna talk about what I'm doing and what you can do to build your 2022 press plan. And I was thinking about it, I was like, man, I gotta start, I have to talk to my people. I gotta talk to the Speak Your Way to Cash fam. If there are any Speak Your Way to Cash fam members in the building, let me know. Those of you who are listening on the podcast, y'all are in the Speak Your Way to Cash family, all right? So if you're in the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group, you're in the podcast, you bought the book, you listen to me on any platform, I consider y'all speak your way to cash family members, all right? So I wanted to talk to you all this evening and I'm like, okay, well, what can I talk to the speak your way to cash family about? And I made a commitment this year to take y'all behind the scenes. 
to, to, to rip off the curtain a little bit more and show you guys some things that we're doing in our business that you can do in your business to bolster your credibility and influence. So this week, we did a couple of different things. By way of transparency, hello, hello, welcome, welcome, Tashana. By way of transparency, welcome, Yolanda. I want to tell you guys what we focused on this week in the business because we're at Thursday. So this week in the business, we focused on solidifying our sponsorship outreach plan. We are reaching out to companies who we think will be perfect fits to sponsor Speak Your Way to Cash Live. So we did that, right? We also went to look at venues for Speak Your Way to Cash Live. For any of you all who do events, look, doing events in the pandemic is a whole different ballgame, okay? So I have been going and talking to venues, looking at venues, making sure that I can find a venue that works for the event this month, even though the event's in November, you got to get your venues early. So word to the wise, if you're doing an event in 2022, get your venue wise. So we've been doing that. But the other thing we've been doing, and this is what brings me to what we're going to talk about tonight, is we've been solidifying our press plan. We have been figuring out first, these are the elements of the plan, first, of all the clients that we serve, who do we want to get in front of more this year? And where are they already assembling so that we can get in front of them more? So that's what we've been thinking about. And we think about it in a couple of different ways. One, what do our clients, and if you're taking notes, this is when you get your, I'm going to give you a warning. If you're taking notes, this is when you get your notes ready. One, what do our clients listen to? What radio stations are they listening to? What podcasts are they listening to? Two, what are they reading? What online websites, like I write for entrepreneur.com. Are they reading entrepreneur.com? Are they reading Business Insider? Are they reading Forbes? How are we going to get featured on platforms that our clients are already reading? And then the third is, who are they listening to? Who has influence over them? Who has influence over them in terms of like thought leaders or experts that they're following? And then we've also been considering heavily this year, what are they scrolling past? Now, I haven't talked about this one a lot. So y'all are getting some good gems on the Speaker Ready Cash podcast. So I want you to share this out. Share it out to show me you care. If, if I see you sharing it, that means you like the content. That means you're going to get more of it. All right. So for what are they scrolling past? What are the pages or the people on Instagram or on Facebook that they're constantly scrolling past that are speaking into their lives on a daily basis? And the reason we want to first do that research is so that then we can develop a press plan that gets us in our client's eyesight, in their ear gate, and we're, we're where they're scrolling past. So of course I want my clients to follow me, but I know that I ain't the only person y'all follow. Come on now. So I want to know who else you guys are following so that I can get in front of those individuals. And for your client base, if you're a speaker, if you are a coach, if you are a consultant, if you are an expert, you want to analyze those things for your client base so that when you're developing your press plan, it's not just, oh, I want to be on Forbes because that'll be like Insta worthy. But it's like, no, no, no. My clients are reading this. And here's some things. So after we, we analyze all of that, after you analyze all of that, because this is what y'all are going to do, and y'all are going to tell me you did it. Actually, I just did what you told me to do. It's crazy. I got on a podcast. After you analyze all of that, because we've done this, then you start to assemble your list. So the first part of it, if I had to sum all that stuff up, I just said is research. People don't like that, but it's research. That's the first part is doing the nitty gritty research. The second part is assembling your attack list. Now, I'm real extra extroverted and type A plus, so I consider it an attack list. Every, everything I do in my business, like, mm, we got to attack it. So after we get that research together and we do that digging, then we have our attack list. And this is going to be just, I mean, simply a Google sheet that has all of this information in it in a manner that I can upload to my CRM, which is a client relationship management tool that I'm going to use to pitch all of these people to collaborate with them. Now, press falls in two buckets for me. The, the things that we talked about, two buckets. The first bucket is I'm going to pitch myself to be on podcasts and featured in news outlets and go on television. That's another thing. What are they watching on TV? I don't know if I said that earlier, but I'm going to pitch myself to, to those things and they're not going to charge me for it. I'm going to do the pitching. If they like my pitch, I will get on those outlets. It'll be great. Okay. And once I get on those outlets, it's up to me. Once they say yes, 
it is up to me to shine. And depending on how large the platform is, once they say yes, then a whole nother bucket of questions comes about, which is how do I make the most out of my time with that audience? How do I tailor my answers to be in alignment with what that audience needs to hear from me? And then what's going to be my lead magnet to get that audience from where they're at to becoming in the Speaker Ready Cash family? Like what, how are we going to build that? How are we going to build that bridge for me to get there? So those are the questions that you ask once you get on. So the, the, the win isn't just solidifying the feature because for me, solidifying the feature is just the first part of the interaction. What you want to think about is, okay, we got this feature. How are we going to convert those listeners to leads for us? All right. If this is making sense, just drop a one in the chat. If you're like, boom, I got it. One, this makes total sense to me. Drop a one in the chat. And if you have questions, feel free to let me know those in the chat. And if you're in the podcast family and you're listening to this, email me your questions so that I can answer them on the next episode. Um, we may do a Q&A, a Q&A segment on the podcast that I can answer the questions that you all email in, but please do let me know if you all have questions. All right. So boom, you do your research. Then you assemble your list, your attack list. All right. These are the people that you're going to pitch, okay? Once you have that attack list, now you need a way to pitch them. Now, I'm I'm not super techie, but at this point in my business, I'm not manually one-to-one -one pitching people like by hand, all of that. I, I use HubSpot. I put them in to our database and then we will email those people out on a particular day and start following up through the process. Now, in our on that attack list that we have, we're also tracking manually. My assistant does it, but one of our mem the members of our team will track manually if they responded, um, if they declined, uh, any notes about the interview. Sometimes people, depending on how large the platform is or if they want more information, they'll want to set up a pre-call with me to make sure I'm a good fit for their audience. And to be honest with you guys, I don't always do it, but there are some platforms I really want to be on. And I'm like, all right, I'll do a pre-call as well. So you got to you got to figure it out based on your time. But what I try to do in the pitch is one, I don't, I try like literally, I can't say I've never done it, but I try really hard to only pitch platforms that I've heavily researched. There may be a time when a team member of mine does the research and they slide it to me and it's not quite the best fit. But for the most part, when I'm being featured on a platform, it's because I've chosen that platform. So I already know like this is going to be a really good platform for me, for my brand, for my audience. And they have members of my audience in their community already. So if you know who your audience is and if you know like, okay, for me, most of our audience consists of black women. We have other women in our audience and men, but the vast majority of the people in our audience are black women, right? I know that. You can look at our pictures and see that. <laughs> you can look at our pictures and see that. Now, there we have a very diverse group of individuals that we service, but that's a data point that I need because I know, okay, I'm going to be looking at magazines that cater to that audience. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. And the reason out of all the press that I've done, and I've said this before, so if you if you have not attended Speaker Ready Cash Live, but you're attending this year, just drop a me in the comments. Because some of y'all been playing. You've been looking, you've been watching, you're like, oh, I'm listening to the podcast. I don't know if I'll be comfortable at the event. You will. You'll love the event. <laughs> it's our seventh event this year. So I don't know what humongous thing we're going to do to just make it extra, extra, extra special, but we're making it super extra special. Like seven, this is our seventh event. Seventh event. But one of the things that I say often is out of all the press that I've done, the press features that have made me the most money are hands down podcasts, hands down. And all the data that I have read on getting big media and all that other stuff, all that data has um, supported why that is. So there's a lot of information about data points about why podcasts are so powerful. One, it's long form content. And one of the data points that I love, that I love is that 50% of people who start a podcast finish it. What that means is, that unlike when you're looking at, you know, a Facebook ad and you scroll by it or people who look at an article and they read the headline and they never read the article. I, I've been guilty of that. And I love reading, but I've been guilty of that. With a podcast, 
50% of people who started finish it all the way through, which means that people aren't just going to be listening to me for five seconds or 10 seconds. They're going to be listening to me for 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes sometimes. I have some podcast episodes that are over 60 minutes long. And what, and, and, when someone is listening to you and you're in their ear and they're hearing you consistently over time, their children start to know who you are. Their husband starts to hear who you are. Like, it's so unbelievably powerful. So for me, I love podcasts. I also love that with podcasts, I can get hyper-specific about the audience I'm trying to reach. So if I want to do a sales-focused uh, presentation, or I know like with Speaker Ready Cash, a lot of what we teach falls into two buckets, mindset, B2B sales. That's the two buckets. It falls mindset, B2B sales, confidence, sales, confidence, sales. Even like what we're talking about now, press, I put it under sales. It's all, it is a marketing strategy that helps you get to sales. And even with you getting on the podcast feature, I'm not a publicist. So I'm not stopping at like, oh, get on this podcast feature. It's like, no, no, get on this podcast feature. And then what are you going to say to get that person to convert into a lead? And then how are you going to nurture that lead to get that person to convert into a customer? And how do you serve that customer to get that customer to convert into a friend and a long time engagement, someone that you are serving on a high level years, years, years to come? So it falls into those two buckets. So I can go and look for podcasts that every episode or 50 plus percent of their episodes fall into that one of those two categories. I can get hyper specific versus like I've done a Forbes feature and it's great, but it, it's not hyper specific enough for me to say, yep, most people who come into contact with this are going to be specifically interested in what I teach. So I love podcasts. Hello, hello. I love podcasts for that. Okay. So number one, do your research, right? What are your, what are your customers hearing, listening to, seeing, scrolling past, watching on television? And then after you do your research, you want to get your attack list together. These are the people that you're going to actively reach out to in order to be featured on their platforms. So that's number two. And then three, once you get your attack list together, you got to send the pitch. Y'all know I'm good for a pitch. I'm good for a pitch. We sent out a pitch this week to, I can actually give you guys, I, I love giving you guys the real, the real, the real data. We sent out a pitch this week. I don't think it was many, and we have not totally finished our um, sequence with these folks. So we sent out individual pitches to some podcasts I really want to be on. We've had three that have soft confirmed, meaning they've said, yes, we're just scheduling the dates. And then we're still waiting to hear back from the others. We only had one that declined. And so when I send out a pitch campaign, so I'm pitching these podcasts, you're gonna, they're going to get an initial pitch from me. I, I write it. And I, I am sure to put something in that pitch so they know that it's like, it's actually me sitting out the pitch. You know what I mean? It's not like, hello, I am a robot. I want to be on your podcast. Here's all this irrelevant stuff that has nothing to do with your podcast. Typically, I'm starting off early with a compliment. Hey, love your show. The episode where you talked about A, B, and C really was life-changing. Absolutely love the guests that you feature. Something so they know that I'm listening to their podcast episodes. And if you, I have a podcast, This obviously. You all are listening to it. <laughs> the Speak Your Ready Cash podcast. We have over 140 episodes. If you only listen to the last like 20 or so episodes, they've been solo episodes, but it's not a solo podcast. We do interview guests and we're in the process now. We have one of those shows where we don't really take inbound solicitations. Typically, I'm choosing the guests that are on my podcast, but we're in the process now of confirming who we're going to be interviewing over the next six months. I say that to say a lot of the shows that I've pitched, they're larger shows because when I first started my business, you guys, I would be, if anyone had a podcast, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'll am i be on your podcast. I, I'd love to be on your podcast. Because my time is more limited, I'm very deliberate about where I show up because time is real, real sensitive around here. So at this point, I want to see that they have at least 100 episodes that they have at least 25 to 35, love 40, five-star reviews. And then I want to listen to enough of the episodes to see whether I could add value. I want to see who the other guests are on the show. So to, to flip it, I have a podcast. When I'm pitching guests to be on my podcast, which is how we get the guests that we get on our podcast, I pitch them. Typically, they're not pitching me. We're emailing them out and saying, hey, I'd love to have you on the podcast. We've interviewed New York Times bestseller, 
uh, Michael Port. We've interviewed NSA past president Jim Cathcart. We've interviewed uh, Grant Baldwin, who's done over 2,000 paid professional speeches. Like We literally tell them the credentials of the people that we've interviewed. Then we say we have over 45 star reviews and over 140 active episodes and a raging community of thousands of people that love the Speaker Ready Cash brand. So we're selling them on what we have to offer. So when I'm looking for shows to be on, and this is what you should do too, what's your criteria for the show? Obviously, you want it to, you want it to have your audience within it, but what's your criteria? What are you looking at? How many five-star reviews do you want them to have first? What do you want their um, social media accounts to look like? Is it okay if it's a brand new podcast or not? I don't want to be like, unless I know you and you're a client, I'm typically not your first episode. So, you know, like figure out what your criteria is so that you can evaluate what you can get out of it. Because I can tell you, I have been on big, big, big podcasts with millions and millions of followers. But the podcast, let me look up the podcast I was on. I can trace over $10,000 of revenue from one podcast that I was on. And it's not necessarily the podcast that had the most uh, followers, but it was the podcast where the host had the most influence over her audience. So you want to be careful not to only judge um, the podcast that you want to be on by the number of followers they have, but rather the um, the quality of the community or the close knitness of the community to the host, the endearment that the community has to the host. So like for me, we had some people who sponsored Speaker Ready Cash Live. One of our sponsors was able to make their money back three times over because our community, we just gotta, y'all, y'all know who you are. Y'all know y'all dope. Y'all know y'all are amazing. And if we present a really good opportunity to our community, our community buys. We've had affiliate partners do really well by being affiliates of the Speaker Ready Cash brand because our community is just so like, y'all just so dope that if you give us a good offer, we're making a buying decision. You know how it is when you're great, when you're excellent, when you know what you're doing. So those are the people we have in our community. So it's not just about, I say that to say, it's not just about, you know, it, does the podcast have a million followers on Instagram? Because I've been on a podcast with 1.2 million followers on Instagram and it was great. It was cool. But the podcast where I got the most like direct revenue from almost 30 days within being on the show was the podcast where the host had the most influence over their audience. So keep that in mind. But I do recommend you have criteria. Don't just go on any and everyone's show um, because you still have your brand to consider and to think about. So there should be some criteria for it. And you do want to make sure there's some alignment. So hopefully that's helpful. So then you got to send your pitch. In your pitch, make sure it's personalized to some degree. You want to make sure that it has some personalization to it. And you want to make sure that it gives them a clear way to say yes to you. Can I come on the show within the next three months? Do you think this will be a good fit for your audience? Do you have a scheduling link or some other process for me to follow to get onto your show? Give them a question um, that they can answer and give them that question right away. So that's the pitch thing. And if you're interested, if you're like, okay, well, I need more on the pitch. I believe we still have in my shop the Pitch Your Way to Press ebook. It is here. The Speak Your Way to Cash book is now available for you to purchase. Go to Amazon to get your audio, Kindle, or hardcover copy of the book. And we have a paperback copy, okay? So you can get it on Audible and listen to it. And I read it myself. So if you love the podcast, you will love the audio book. Go get it now. Speak Your Way to Cash, how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. A bit about the book. It's broken down into six parts and it is over 260 pages of goodness, okay? Part one covers mindset. Part two covers getting yourself in the press. Part three covers assembling your six-figure offer. Part four covers inviting people to work with you. Ahem, sales. Part five covers delivering an outstanding speech. And part six covers legalities that every speaker needs and how to build a team. I mean, literally, what did we leave out? Nothing. So go to Amazon and grab your copy today. And let me know you did it too. I I wrote this so long ago, but it's still really, really good. Okay. So the Picture Rated Press ebook is in my shop. So you can get that. If you go to the shop, I believe it's under, 
I, it may be under books. Yeah, it's like thirty nine bucks, thirty nine ninety nine. I shouldn't say the price because who knows what the price will be. But that's what the price is now, as of today's date. So go and grab that if you want more stuff on that. But you got to send your pitch, and then four. This is important. The pitch is not the end point. You have to follow up. You have to follow up. Most of the press features I've received have come from the follow up. One of the uh, people that we reached out to, we said three emails spaced a couple days apart. They finally responded and were like, hey, would absolutely love to have you on. It's just been so crazy around here. It's so busy. Emails are getting lost. Let's set up a date. So you do want to have a follow-up system. This is why I like having a CRM that helps me to follow up. That's a great question, Yolanda. How does a speaker become a guest on your podcast if they are a new speaker? Great question. So I'll be honest with you guys. We are, we don't really accept pitches. We choose who's on our podcast. And then sometimes if they're a new speaker, we'll do coaching episodes. And those episodes are typically reverse, reserved for people in our community. So if you're in the Speaker Ready Cash Facebook group, sometimes we'll come in and do a, a we'll say, hey, we have five coaching spots available during the pandemic when things first hit because a VIP day with me is a higher level investment, we were allowing people to do like a coaching episode on the podcast for a nominal nominal fee to make sure they showed up. It was under a hundred bucks. So I don't know if I'll bring that back. If you're interested in that, just drop yes in the chat and I'll let you know if I bring it back and we'll let you know how to, how to get on there. But for the most part, we try to feature um, multi six and seven figure speakers, people who've made a significant amount of money from speaking and they share their experience. A lot of the people we've interviewed have been in the game like 20 years. Jim Cathcart has been in the game, I think, 35 plus years. He was a former president of the National Speakers Association. So our guests are, when we have guests on, they're, they're pretty well established. And I, I do that purposefully because these are people who can offer wisdom and insight over and above what I've even seen in my career. And those are the folks that I love to feature. So just tidbit on who we love to bring to y'all. But sometimes we do coaching episodes and those are perfect for new um, new speakers. So that's how that would be. That may be a, a, a way in for you. So let me know about that. Let me know if you're interested in that. So you got to follow up. You have to follow up. You have to follow up if you want to develop your press plan in 2022. The follow-up is going to be critical. And then be prepared for them to ask you. They're going to ask for your short bio. They're going to ask for your picture. They're going to ask for talking points. They're going to ask for affiliate links. They're going to ask for bullet points of what you plan to talk about. All the shows I've been on have some form that they're going to need you to fill out. What I did, I made an SOP. I put all this information in an SOP. My admin fills out the, the forms that people need filled out. Almost everyone will need some of that stuff filled out. When I did my feature on, I think it was NBC. I was supposed to do a two minute feature on NBC. And this is this feature I'm talking about is actually on the Speaker Ready Cash website. So if you go to www.speakerreadycash.com, I believe it's still up and you'll see it. But I was supposed to do a couple minute feature. And it turned into a 12 minute full on feature. And they asked me for like B-roll of past talks, pictures of my family. I mean, if you look at this feature, it was it was so it was like more than what I could have asked for. And the way that I received that feature, I, I pitched, I followed up three times on the third follow up. The anchor called my cell phone. Whenever you pitch TV, give them your cell phone number. They need to get in touch with you right away because typically they don't give you a whole lot of lead time. Like I could get a call tonight. They want me on air tomorrow. And when I was heavily doing TV, like as a legal correspondent for a network in Chicago, I would get calls like 10 p.m. Like, hey, oh, Ashley, can you be at the station 4 a.m.? And had to come looking like a movie star 4 a.m. in the studio doing makeup, ready to go. And I did my own makeup, my own hair. It was, <laughs> it was wild. Like at one point I actually, I like resigned from this free position. I wasn't even getting paid to be a, um, a legal correspondent. I was on there so much. I formally had to resign. I was like, Hey, I don't really do this anymore. Here's what I recommend you reach out to. <laughs> I need my sleep, but it was cool. Cause you get the social proof. Now I have all these like, little media clips of me on television. So it's really dope. I say all that to say with TV, make sure you put your phone number in there because they will sometimes just call you. So what happened with this, this feature with NBC, um, one, I was pitching to a theme. So what we're doing, my Speaker Ready Cash Academy program starts next month. 
literally I have calls, onboarding calls with a few of the members who did the pay and full option next week. So we'll be doing our one-on-one -on -one call. So shout out to you all in the Speak Your Way to Cash Academy. Love you guys. We are doing pitch power hours in the academy, two per month, where all we're focusing on is pitching and I'm giving them a script. When I pitched to the television news network, it was in the month of March, which is Women's History Month. The responses I got were almost instant and really, 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 really positive. And they wanted me to come on air. The news anchor calls my cell phone and goes, hey, Ashley, your pitch was so confident that would you be open to us doing a full length feature, 12 minutes, we interview you, we show your clips of your TEDx talk, we show your website, they were showing our website on there. Would you be open to that? Is that okay with you? Because you know, you're really confident and I'd love to speak to you more about the currency of confidence and what you're doing in the community and your, your, your philosophy on life. And I was like, yeah, of course I'm open to that. That would have never happened had I not sent those three pitches. So what I typically do, you guys, I send one pitch long form, telling them what I want to talk to them about. Follow-up email goes out in a few days later. Then my last email, I simply, the last follow-up email to the follow-up email goes out two days after that. And every single email gets shorter. If you were in the Pitch Your Way to Cash Challenge, you already know about this, but don't worry. The free Pitch Your Way to Cash Challenge is coming back around the corner, so make sure you're registered for it. And if you already went through it, you're going to want to go through it again, okay? So... I got that big feature from the third follow-up with that individual. And I got it because I answered the phone when she called. So be ready. When you're in pitch season, have your cell phone ready. Be ready to answer the phone. Make sure that you're open to those opportunities. And that's for TV. But I love podcasts. I love podcasts. Podcasts, they tell you in advance. <laughs> they tell you in advance. And you kind of know what you have, what you're, what you're up against. With TV, they do not tell you in advance, but it from a branding perspective, from your followers getting really excited to support you and watch you on TV, from you just positioning yourself as a more established expert, TV is really good as well. Two big months are coming up, February and March. For a lot of you, February is Heart Month and Black History Month. If you have a business, if you are a Black-owned business, if you are a health or wellness professional or coach, Black History Month or Health Month, their Heart Month. There are ways for you to pitch around those themes and get on television. Podcast content is typically evergreen such that you don't even need, it doesn't need to be a thematic month for you to be on a podcast. You just need to make sure your topic is in alignment with the topic of the show. Okay? All right. So those are some tips on pitching. That follow-up piece though, it's critical. So number one, you want to research. Number two, you want to build your hit list. Number three, you want to pitch. Number four, you got to follow up. You have to follow up. Those elements are critical. We talk about these principles in the Speak Your Way to Cash book even further. And I have other resources on this topic. But please, you guys, what your growth plan has to be in effect. My word for this year was expansion. So this year, you are going to see me on TV. You are going to see me on podcast. You are going to see me featured on some of your favorite pages that you like to scroll through. You are going to see some high-level collaborations with some influencers that you really respect. So that's what we're doing. And we're developing these, the places where I'm going to show up, the places where I'm going to, the, the, the places I'm going to use to expand my brand and expand the reach of what we're doing and get our message out, we're, we are developing those lists from the people we've already served. So I got one more good tip for you guys before we head on out for the night, okay? Here it is. How many of you, let me ask you a question. Ponder this, podcast fan, ponder this. How many of you have already sold at least five things to your audience. Like you've made at least five sales in your business. If you've made at least five sales in your business, think yes or drop yes in the comments, either one. Now, many of you have sold more than five. You have more than five sales. You have more than five sales over all the years of your business. You have more than five sales over all the years of your business. Okay, great. 
you want to go really, really, really deep into that the data of who your audience actually is, who is actually giving you money, who is actually saying yes to buying from you. That's your audience. A lot of people get caught up in this avatar and it's like this fic fictitious person that has never bought anything from them. It's like, oh, her name is Sarah and she shop in Nordstrom and she drive a, a little, what she drive? What, what Sarah drive? Sarah drive a little, I don't know. I can't even think of it, a minivan. She got two kids that play soccer, whatever it is. Sarah's cool. But what about Samantha that's made 10 purchases from you over the last two years? What is, what's her makeup? So one thing that we do, and I'm cool with you knowing who your avatar is, but it needs to be based, if you already have sales, it needs to be based on the people you've already served and of the people you've already served, the people you've enjoyed serving most. I know that almost everyone in our audience has a bachelor's degree, almost everyone. And then over 75% of people who come to my events have a master's degree or higher, over 75%. Over 50% of them made six figures in their corporate job or very close to it. And most of them are investors. I'm typically not their first investment. They have, a, they have an investor's mindset. They know that in order to get to the next level, it's going to take a transaction of some sort. They're investing in people working in their business. They're investing in people helping them at home. They're investing in coaches and mentors. Many of them have multiple coaches and mentors. The most important thing for me to do with the people in my audience is get them from just investing to doing and implementing. And the doing and implementing typically happens not because it, it happens from a mindset shift about who they actually are. So I know that the people I work with are already great, already excellent, already smart. They may need help repositioning that excellence, repackaging that excellence, recommunicating that excellence, but you're already excellent. You're already excellent. And so create your avatar, but do it based on the data of the sales that you've already made. Then you can answer all these other questions. So if you look at all the people that have done business with you, what's their makeup? Who are they? More men, more women. And, and of the people that you've already done business with, who do you enjoy doing business with the most? Then you analyze what are they listening to? What are they looking like? And if you want to give it a name, like a fake name, that's cool. You want to give her a fake age? That's cool. But it should, I believe, when you already have sales in your business. Like our business, I mean, let me let me see what we did last year. So if we look at our business and we just look at the sales data, all products, I'm going to go last year. On the coaching side of our business. Okay. So last year, coaching side of our business, we served 200, we made 258 sales. So like 258 people gave us money, right? That's This is just in, in uh, Kartra, which is what I use. So this is on the consumer side of our business. So I should know what these 258 people are looking like. Like, who are these people? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what are they doing? What are they buying? What does that look like? How does that look? And our average cart value of the person who spends money with us, there's some way above this, some way below it, is $800. So we know this stuff. So then I can start looking at who these individuals are, what it looks like. And typically, because of the way that we do our business, we collect a lot of information when they sign up. Because if you come to my event, I'm asking you everything. I want to know everything about you so that I can best serve you at the actual event experience. So some of you may need to start when people buy from you, asking them more questions into who they are so that you can develop a press plan to get in front of more of those people. We have a niched audience. You all are speakers, experts, thought leaders. If you're not, you plan to be, you are a future speaker, expert, or thought leader. You're someone who wants to speak and you want people to listen. You want to teach people a skill set that you've mastered, whether it be a soft skill or a hard skill. So you're reading books on sales, on marketing, on entrepreneurship, on selling to corporations. You're reading the Speak Your Way to Cash book. You're listening to podcasts on getting paid to speak. Like that's where you're at. That's what you're listening to. Or you're listening to mindset stuff. I also know a vast, the vast majority of our audience, they're religious. They have, they are people of faith. Majority Christian, but people of other faiths too. But they are people of faith, largely in part. They have a belief system, something that that grounds them. I know that about my people. And so you want to know that about yours because maybe 
you're going on podcasts that combine faith and business. And you can get a really good list of those shows once you know who your people are. So after you've made some sales in your business, then you want to dig into that data and find out who these people are. And sometimes if you don't know it, you can just Google. I mean, people put everything on Facebook. You can go between their Facebook and their their LinkedIn profile. You can find out they go to college, where they work, are they in corporate, what they do, what's their job titles. Like that is really going to be where you start. So we did get a question here. Where's the best place to search for podcasts? Apple Podcasts, um, there are a couple of things. You can search a couple of different ways. There are some people that you really admire that you look up to. Maybe they are in complementary industries and they've been featured on a lot of shows and they have a media feature on their page. You can look at that and just say, oh, okay, they've been on these podcasts. And then from there, you want to research those podcasts and make sure they line up with what you have going on. And then there's also lists. If you Google top 500 business podcasts, top 50 beauty podcasts, whatever your topic is, top 100 coaching podcasts. If you're looking to, to target the corporate audience, top 50 HR podcasts, top 50 podcasts for chief technology officers, top 50 podcasts for marketing directors. So looking at, looking at lists, Google lists, those are great places to search as well. And then you can always have someone research that person's information what I do if I have someone do it manually, typically the podcast has an Instagram page, the Instagram page has an email link, we put it all in a Google Doc, and then we research those people. And we typically direct it to the host. And if they have another place they'd like it to go, then we'll direct it there as well. And some people have forms they want you to fill out. Even if there's a form on a podcast to fill out, I like to also email. So do both. Um, but definitely track it and follow up. Track it and follow up and know that getting in the press is not an active, it's not a direct sales strategy. So it's almost like content marketing on steroids, meaning it can happen like it happened for me. You get on a podcast, you get all these new clients right away. But what's more likely is you get on a podcast, you share that podcast with your audience, people develop a deeper understanding of who you are. And if you are previewing how you can help the audience while doing the podcast interview, people will come to you organically. But like I say in the book, on sales, I don't know where that chart is, but I have a chart in this book. I don't even know if I can, oh, I may have just found it. Oh, y'all are so, y'all are blessed. Y'all are blessed. Somebody out there praying. Um, there's a chart in this book and I believe I, I believe I found it. I think I just saw it. Yep, I found it. On page 116 of the Speak Your Ready Cash book, there's literally a chart. So there's a chart in this book that talks about the sales strategies that you have. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sales strategies that I talk about in the book. So cold email campaigns, referrals and recommendations, content marketing, inviting them to a promotional event, paid advertising, snail mailing campaign, and cold calling. I will put podcast under content marketing, which is like, you know, essentially it's a podcast, it's content, and it's going to attract clients to you, but it's a slower way to build. <laughs> it's a slower way to build. So basically that's what it talks about. That's what the chart talks about, but it's on one six, it's on page 116 of the Speaker Ready Cash book. If you've got the audio book, you got to get the physical book and, and look at the charts too so you don't miss anything. But that is what um, I would put it under content marketing, meaning this is a piece of what I'm going to do to market my business. I put it in the marketing bucket, but I also have a sales plan as well. So you need to have a combination of things in order to get off that revenue cycle. Like some people are like, I have a lot of money here, but then I, it's way, way, way down another time. Typically, that means you're doing one thing to get business, but you don't have a system to do a number of those things so that you don't so that you're not on a revenue roller coaster. And then if you want to grow your revenue after you have a good system that works, you just scale your efforts in the things that are working in your business. All right. So hopefully that was helpful. That tip went a little bit little little bit longer. <laughs> but we we're just getting into the 2022 content for the Speak Your Ready Cash podcast. So you know it's gonna it's gonna be what it is. If you got something out of this, if you got something out of this, then please do share this with someone that you know. Just share it with them. If you learned something from this, let me know what you learned from this podcast episode so that I can 
so that I can engage with you. And thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. It is my honor to be your host of the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. And very, 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 very soon, we will be launching tickets to Speak Your Way to Cash live. And I want to see you there. I'd love to see you live and in person. We'll have all the COVID protocols. I live in Chicago, so we got all the things to keep you safe. But um, that'll be happening soon. So please stay tuned. I've gotten some emails from some of you about when tickets will launch. We're going to do a, a private launch for tickets for our customers first. We're going to do a private launch for tickets for our customers first, and then we will do a public launch to everyone else. So if you are a customer in any sense, whether you spent a dollar or you spent $50,000 with us, we're going to do a private launch event for you all first, because let me tell you why we're doing that. We're doing that because we have very limited VIP in-person tickets, and I want to reward people who've already been supporting me to get first dibs at those tickets. We have very, very, very limited, mainly due to COVID and Illinois is super strict. So we don't have a lot of tickets for the in-person. So we want to launch those privately to the people in our community and then we'll launch them publicly to everyone else. So if you want to be on that private launch list and get your invite to our private launch party for our tickets for our event, then go on to the shop and, and do, a little, do a little digging. The event is in November. It's in November. So it's November 4th. Well, it's in November. <laughs> We're confirming the venue. Then I can officially release the date. We're hoping it's the same weekend as last year, which will be the first weekend in November. But we will confirm the date once we have it. So we'll have the date pretty soon for you guys. I've been working hard on getting a venue that that works. I'm so picky with um, with hotels, but I'm trying to get out of my own way and just choose one at this point. So, you know, it's it should be in November. The event will be in November. So we got a little bit of time before the event. And the, the launch party... The private ticket party will be in March. We're planning that for March. All right. All right, guys. Well, you all have an awesome time. Thank you so much for joining me on the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. If this was valuable, share it. Please do leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That is how we ensure we get the absolute best guests and best content to you. And I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Wasn't that interview amazing? If you're anything like me, you have pages full of notes. But here's the thing. Before you head out, I want you to go to Facebook.com and... Join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. That is where I am. That's where a ton of other speakers are, a ton of other people who listen to the show. All We all congregate there and chat. And it's 100% free. Now, if you're ready to take your speaking career to the next level, I have two ways for you to do that. One, you can go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash SYWTC live replay and pick up the live replay. That training is seven modules, chock full of information. It's crazy. Go over there, read all about it. Or if you want a more personal experience, you're already, you already know that you want to be a speaker. You're ready to fully commit and you want someone to walk you through it and save you tons of time Googling and doing it on your own. Then book a VIP day with me. You can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com, scroll down until you see the VIP day section and get more information on that there. All right. Thank you guys again for watching. Please do not forget to leave us a review. That is how we keep this train rolling and get some of the best speakers in the world to get on this show. So please, please, please leave a review. Shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and Facebook in the Speaker Way to Cash group, Instagram at, at the Ashley Nicole Show. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you and say hi. All right, y'all have an awesome, awesome day.